Hello, my class. I hope you enjoyed the first chapter that we read in our new book, Jungle Thorn. I know I certainly really enjoyed this story. I especially love the pictures as well. So I think the author and the illustrator have both done a really good job on this book. Before we go on to the second chapter, I have four questions to ask you. And so after each question, just maybe pause the video to give yourself a little bit of time to answer them. First question is, how do you think Kundima feels when the thorn pokes her eye? Okay. That may have been kind of an easy question, right? Nobody thinks it feels good, so that obviously hurt her and made her very sad. But here's the next question. How do you think Kundima felt when she looked in the stream and saw her ugly eye? And the next question, how do you think some of Kandima's friends treated her after her eye became infected? Are you ready for the last question? The last question is about you. What would you have done? If you were there when that happened, how would you have treated Kandima after her eye became infected and ugly? Okay, well, here we go. Let's read the next chapter. Before I start reading, you should have your word cards with you, your, your picture and word cards uh, from yesterday. And so remember that some of the words we used in the chapter in chapter one. So follow along in chapter two and find out which words we use in today's story. Tawan's plan. Kandima, we're all going to teacher Dodd's house tonight. Tawan will be there too, mother explained. Teacher Dodd was born in Borneo and had moved to Durian Village to start a school. He had become a Christian and also wanted to teach the people about Jesus. Tawan was the name the villagers gave the missionary from the United States. Whenever he came to visit, he brought his Bible and taught the people about Jesus. He also brought medicine for fevers, strange pinchers to pull teeth, and a bag of treats for the children, gum or bits of candy. I don't want to go, Kandima said. She didn't want Teacher Dodd or Tawan to see her sick, ugly eyes. Of course you will go, Mother said as she helped Kandima down the ladder. Lots of excited people packed Teacher Dodd's house. Tawan sat in the middle of the floor talking to families. Kandima's father got close enough to shake his hand. Are your children here? Tawan asked. Yes, they are, father proudly replied. He handed baby Bonnie to Tawan so he could see how much he had grown since Tawan's last visit. And this is my big girl, father said, taking Chaya's hand. Tawan put his arm around Chaya and asked, Where's Kandima? Kandima had been hiding behind her mother. Mother gently pushed her toward Tawan. Tawan handed baby Bonnie back to father. He took Kandima's sad face in his hand and turned it upward. She saw nothing but kindness in his eyes. Then, with a smile, he gave her a big hug. That evening, as he talked with the villagers, Tawan held Kandima on his lap. Tawan loves me just the same as always, Kandima thought. She felt better than she ever had since her accident. When it was time to leave, Tawan stopped father. Wait a minute, I want to talk to you. Kandima and Chaya climbed down the ladder while father waited behind. Kandima has had a terrible accident happen to her eye. Tell me what happened, Tawan asked. Father told Tawan the whole story. It has been almost two months since the thorn poked her eye. The eye is blind, father sighed. Nothing can bring back the sight, not even our most powerful medicine. That's true, Tawan replied, but we must do something to save the other eye or she will be blind in both eyes. Then Tawan told father that he would like to take Kandima to his home in the big city. He would find doctors with medicine to cure the infection in the good eye. I will talk to Kandima's mother and think about it, was all father would say before leaving. 
From her sleeping mat, Kundima heard her parents talking about Tawan's plan until late into the night. I don't know if the medicine will really do her any good, Mother said. Besides, she is so young. She has never traveled away from our village before. I think she would be very lonesome and cry all the time. Tawan is kind, Father replied. He has little children of his own. He would take good care of Kandima. Did you see how gently he held her on his lap tonight? Finally, Kandima heard her mother say, No, I will not let her go. We will just let things stay the way they are. Kandima turned her face toward the wall and cried herself to sleep. Several weeks later, as Kandima sat in the shade of the durian tree sorting rice, she heard a familiar voice let out a very familiar call. Tawan is coming! Tawan is coming! announced one of her friends. Kandima stopped working and strained with her left eye to see if it really was Tawan coming down the path. Her eye had become so sore and red that she could not see very far at all. There are two Tawans coming, one friend announced. One is our Tawan, and the other one is taller. Our Tawan explained that new Tawan was his brother-in-law. The villagers gave him a name at once, Guru, since they were told he was a teacher in Singapore. With a big smile, Tawan lifted Kandima up onto his lap. Looking at Kandima, he could tell that her eye was not getting any better. I hope her parents will let her go to the city. I know there are doctors who can help her, Tawan thought. Tawan didn't have to wait too long for an answer to his question. During the evening, Teacher Dodd came over and whispered to Tawan that Kandima's parents would be willing to let her go to the big city to see a doctor. Would you like to go to my house, Kandima? asked Tawan. Kandima wiggled with happiness. She looked at her father. He smiled at her, and suddenly Kandima knew the answer would be yes. Tawan and Guru told father that Kandima would have to go to Singapore, a big city that was many days away by ship. When Tawan and Guru left in a few days, Kandima would go with them. The next day, Kandima ran through the village telling everyone she was going to visit Tawan's house. She was so excited that she almost forgot she was going to Singapore to get help for her eyes. On her last night in the village, tears filled Kandima's eyes as she lay on her sleeping mat. Tomorrow, she would leave Durian Village. Singapore is far away. What will it be like there? When will I see my family again? She wondered. There on her mat... Under her mosquito net, Kandima prayed to Jesus and told him everything that frightened her. Then she hugged her doll and went to sleep. All right. How do you think she feels now? We'll read the next chapter tomorrow. <laughs>